Hey guys, I'm here today to do my January wrap up. Finally, oh, biscuits. I didn't think about the movie situation. I keep doing this because now I've like switched to recording on my phone and that's usually where I look at things. Um, so anyways, <laughs> I finished six books in the month of January. Um, four of those were Japanese books, so I've already talked about them. Um, I posted a video recently that said, uh, that was like Japan, Morocco, Argentina, I think. And so that's where I reviewed my books that I read for the Invisible Cities Project. So, um, I'm not going to talk a ton about the book. So hopefully this video isn't super long because I already have talked about most of these books. Um, and yeah, I'll link below where I talk about them if you're curious about my thoughts and haven't seen that video. Um, so I guess, yeah, first I'll go over the books that I read and then, oh gosh, I started off the year hot with book buying. I will say part of the problem too, problem, eh, it's not really a problem, but part of my issue, baby, that's not for babies, um, is that I think some things I had purchased in December and rolled over. That's a lie. I don't think that's true. I don't remember. I post, I filmed my uh, January haul already. And so I'm just going to like insert it at the appropriate point um, when I get there. Baby, baby. That's, that's not for baby. Okay. So I'm again, I'm going to go. So just, just so you know, I'm going to rank the books that I read in the month of January. I'm sorry if this is jiggling, but my cat is playing with, playing with things. Are you going for my phone? Silly baby. As uh, so I'm going to rank my books and then I'm going to do my book haul. And then I'm going to show you the books that I am getting rid of this month because I am doing a strict, I am not having a larger TBR at the end of the year than I had at the beginning. Um, my goal obviously would be for it to be less, but I need it to at least not be more. So I'm trying to move in the correct, um, step. I'm also going to mention, um, Last year, I was kind of including all of the all of the movies that I watched in my wrap ups, um, but I am going to stop doing that from now on. I'm just going to do my top five movies that I watched because I am watching quite a few movies. Okay, so let's get on with the books. Um, my least favorite thing is kind of hard to pick. Um, the least favorite thing that I read in January uh, was The Walking Dead Volume Two, uh, Miles Behind Us. Um, I can't really explain to you why this oh gosh is my lowest rated and not the next book that I'm going to talk about but I think the main issue is that um I don't know I don't even think like a lot well I guess a lot happens in this you know I think this is when we meet um oh gosh what are their names Herschel and like Maggie and stuff basically I watched the tv show and so I don't know if because of that I feel like less drawn into the series or less compelled by it or maybe I just read it too fast um and it's not to say that I don't enjoy it and I'm going to keep reading the series um I think I gave it two and a half or three stars maybe it's just not like you know if you can tell based on the books that I read it's not like exactly my jam and I do prefer the tv show and again I think that might be just a what whichever you experienced first might be what you enjoy most which I think the case, um, as is the case for a uh, ring, which is my second least favorite. Um, and again, this is by Koji Suzuki translated by, um, Robert B. Romer and Glenn Wally. Um, and I did a whole review about this, so I will link it below if you're interested. Um, I enjoy my <laughs> review of it. Obviously, you know, you don't have to watch it. Um, but yeah, I, it was really misogynistic and I spoil a lot of things in the review if you do feel like watching it. Um, but you know, whatever. Um, my next, and I feel like, I mean, the rest of these books I really liked, so it's always kind of hard. Not really, kind of. Um, the next one I have is School Girl, School Girl by Osamu Dazai, and this is translated by Allison Markin Powell. And again, I didn't really talk about this in my Invisible Cities wrap up for January because I don't really remember a ton about it, which is kind of disappointing. Um, but again, I have a I have a problem with slim books where I just it doesn't stay in my brain as well. Um, and I really do think it's because I don't spend enough time with it. Like I don't I don't 
I just don't spend enough time with it. And I did enjoy this, but I unfortunately can't really say much about it. Um, then I have Kitchen by Banana Yoshimoto, and this is translated. Bye. <laughs> by Megan Backus. And again, um, I talked about this in my Invisible Cities wrap up, so I just don't really wanna keep talking about the same books over and over again. Um, then these these two, my two favorite books of the month were really hard for me to rank, but I was thinking in my head because I give away a copy of my favorite book um, of like what I would want to give to people. And so that is kind of the main determinant of the order of these. I did give both of these books five stars. So um, the, the first one that I have or next one is um, uh, Slaughterhouse Five or The Children's Crusade, which is a graphic no novel adaptation of Kurt Vonnegut's book. Um, and this is done by Ryan North and Albert Montes. And y'all, this was so, so good. Um, I am a huge Kurt Vonnegut fan. Uh, he is probably my, I'm gonna say my favorite author. Um, and Slaughterhouse Five is not my favorite book of his at all. I actually didn't really like it that much. I mean, it was fine, but uh, like I like Cat's Cradle better, Sirens of Titan, um, Mother Night, Player Piano. Like I like so many more books better than I like Slaughterhouse Five. But this adaptation was so good. It was kind of weird that I gave the adaptation a higher rating um, than I gave to. Uh, sorry, I'm trying to find some stuff to show you guys. Um, than I gave the original book, and it kind of makes me want to go back and reread the original book. Um, so I'm just going to give you kind of some examples of why I think it's so great. So, um, at the very beginning, we have, uh, picture or pictures, drawings of the supporting cast. Um, then we have this timeline of, so part of the plot of this book is that our main character, um, whose name I don't remember, Billy Pilgrim, um, he becomes unstuck in time. So he is a, uh, a veteran from the war. I believe it's World War II. Yeah, of course it's World War II because the bombing of Dresden happens during this book. Um, so, you know, he's this guy that goes and is in the war and then he becomes unstuck in time. I don't remember if he becomes, I think he becomes unstuck in time um, before maybe he goes into the war. I can't really remember, but Basically, this book is nonlinear. It jumps back and forth. There's also aliens involved. It's so good. Oh my gosh, like, look at this. Oh, oh, it's so beautiful. The art is stunning. I'm going to have to get more books from this um, this author. And then there's this, this section here. Oh, where it goes. I think it's, um, yeah. So it, it tells the story of um, the bombing backwards. So it starts off with um, all of the corpses. And then it goes um, forward in time until Adam, to Adam and Eve, um, or I guess backwards in time. Basically, I just think that this is absolutely phenomenal, 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 phenomenal. Why can't I talk words? You know, but yeah, uh, so I guess I will stop talking about this. I really, really, really like, and then my, so this is the book that I'm giving away. Spoiler, surprise. <laughs> Spoiler, that's not the right word, um, but it is Showa, uh, 1926 to 1939, A History of Japan by Shigeru Mizuki, and this um, is a book by Drawn and Quarterly, and it's translated, I believe, by Zach Davison, but let me, yes, Zach Davison, um, and I, again, have already talked about this, I feel like ad nauseum on this channel, but it is the first in a four-part series of the Showa era um, in Japan. Baby, I'm filming a video. <laughs> um, and it is just fantastic. And I have already talked about this. So if you are curious, I will link, I will link the, and I, I try really hard to do the like time stamped portion. So when you click on the link, it'll take you directly to when I'm talking about it. So if you want to know if you're interested in, in this book, um, yes. And it is open internationally as long as Blackwell's ships to you, or I would do book depository if Blackwell's doesn't ship to you. Um, okay. So those are all of the books that I read. <sighs> Get out! <laughs> Move faster. Okay, so now I'm gonna insert a clip of my book haul. I'm gonna start with um, a stack of books that Yamini um, sent me from Shakespeare and Spice, I think, or The Skeptical Reader. You know Yamini. She's yammy. So she um, was getting rid of some books and asked if I wanted any and I uh, 
took some, which in retrospect probably wasn't the smartest idea, but you know, what, what can you do? Um, so the first one is Educated by Tara Westover. And obviously everyone knows what this book is about. I have wanted to read it for a long time. Um, the next is The Piano Lesson by August Wilson. And this is from the, what is that called? The Century Cycle, I think. Um, but I have read Fences and um, Ma Rainey's Black Bottom. I haven't watched either of the movie adaptation, adaptations, but maybe next month I will do that. Um, and yeah, I like love these so much. So I'm really, really excited. And then, um, the next four books that, um, she sent are all, um, NYRB classics. So there's Grief Lessons, Four Plays, um, by Euripides, translated by Anne Carson. Basically, I can't say no to an NYRB classic. Uh, Grand Hotel by Vicki Baum. And I don't know what these are about. Um, Pinocchio by Carl, um, Carlo Colidi, Col Colodi, <laughs> Carlo Colodi, I don't know, it's translated by Jeffrey Brock, and then the last one I guess is not, I'm sorry, it's not an NYRB classic, it is um, The Ballad of Reading Gaul and Other Poems by Oscar Wilde, and I really, really like Oscar Wilde, so I'm excited about that as well. Um, so those are the books that Yamini sent me so kindly. Um, then my mom gave me this book and I, this is like not my kind of book at all. It's, I think it's The Four Agreements is the English title by um, Dr. Miguel Ruiz. Okay, so this is translated by um, Luz Hernandez from, yeah, it's The Four Agreements is the original title. Um, and yeah, I just, this is not my kind of book at all. I have no interest in reading this. But I love my mom, so we'll see. I'll attempt it at some point, but not anytime soon. Um, and then, yeah, I started off the month uh, or the year not super great. I will show you guys um, my books that I got uh, from my subscriptions. I just feel like I'm so tall. Hold on. Okay, so um, I'm going to keep going. I'm sorry, I needed to reposition that, but uh, I'm going to talk about my two um, subscription books next. Uh, the first one is Laughing in the Hills by Bill Barrich, and this is like a a, ra a horse racing book. I assumed it was like kind of memoir-y, um, but I'm not really sure because uh, I had not heard of this and then I received it. Most of the books that we get in this, this is um, the Finney by Post one, are, yeah, 1980. So books that have been published a, a minute ago. Um, and then the other one is the Liter Literati in Sisto from um, the Literati bookstore in Ann Arbor, Michigan. And this one is focused on like indie presses. And um, so this month's book is All God's Children by Aaron Gwynn. And it's a novel of the American West. And this cover is definitely making me want to watch like some, what's that one with the guy, the angry guy? You know what I'm talking about. Um, and then the next book that I have is my um, indie press book for, um, I don't remember what month we're reading, um, J uh, Jacaranda. I don't think I'm pronouncing that correctly, um, but it's a UK publisher. So I, I tried to order um, kind of early because the UK publishers, you don't have to buy it from Blackwells and shipping and stuff. Um, anyway, so I got Bad Love, um, by M Mom, Mame, Mame, Blue. I am so sorry. Um, and yeah, I basically just bought this because of the cover. I mean, you know, I wanted something from this publisher for the Indie Press Project and I couldn't help myself. Um, I feel like this has to do with like some kind of bad love situations as some kind of like a heartbreak and sadness but also you know basically it seems like my kind of book um so then the next two books that I have are from or for the Invisible Cities Project so um, my first book is uh from a Chinese author and that is The Seventh Day by Yu Hua and this is um translated by um, Alan H. Barr. I wish the translator's name would just be on the cover of the book. It's kind of frustrating to me, to be completely honest. At least it's relatively easy to find, but like it should be on the cover, you know? Like if you can blurb NPR, if there's enough space to blurb NPR, there's enough space to put the translator's name, in my opinion. Um, so this was, when was this written? I don't even know anymore. I'm, I think in the early 2000s, the early aughts. Nope. 
Oh, wait. No, 2013. Man, I'm bad at things. <laughs> Anyways, oh, I like how even though I'm filming this on my phone and not my computer, you're still getting my email notifications. That's really funny. Um, and then the next one is Oblivion, which is a memoir by Hector um, Abad. Um, and this is translated. See this one? You got the translator right there on the front uh, by Anne McLean and Rosalind Harvey. And um, I know this is going to be really sad. I think it has to do with like his dad and... Um, uh, you know, during political strife in, in Colombia. So uplifting stuff. Um, and then the next book that I have is, uh, also I'm reading next month. So that's why I needed to do this because a lot of these books I'm trying to read next month. Um, and I want to do my February TBR. Um, and this is for Doris's book, Naturalist Club. I wasn't able to participate in January because World of Wonders, it's so hard to get your hands on these days. You know what I'm saying? I should have bought it back when, but I didn't. Um, and so, yes, so I am going to be joining in for February. And so the book that they're reading is The Home Place by J. Drew Lan Lanham. Lanham. I can't even say U.S. authors' names at this point. I'm so sad with myself. Um, but this is a memoir about um, this man and his relationship to nature. So I'm excited about that. And then the next books are for the booktube prize. So, um, so I am in one of the fiction groups. So I've got my four, four books, um, Shuggy Bane, Jack Homeland Elegies, and White Ivy. So um, I'm going to be reading uh, these three next month. But again, I'm not going to be sharing the fact that I'm even reading them because I think last year I said that I was in the middle of like so-and-so book, not giving my opinion or anything because obviously you can't talk about like your thoughts on the book but just mentioning the fact that I was reading it and it, a lot of the books I hated <laughs> um, for the fiction rounds specifically, I really loved most of uh, the nonfiction books that I read, but the fiction books, I a lot of them I just did not like. And I felt really upset because I was saying that I was reading them and then people in the comments were like, oh, I wanna read that. And I can't be like, I hate it, don't buy it or don't go to the library and get it. But I couldn't say that because of my obligations in the prize. So I'm just not going to mention it until they're all done. And then I will do my wrap up. I'm so excited though. I'm really excited. I actually do have high hopes for the books that I'm, the, that I'm in the roundup. Only one of them was on my like wish list of books that I wanted, um, which, um, was Homeland Elegies, but I, I am actually excited. So anyways, those are the books that I got in January. Um, so now I'm going to go back into the future for me, but the past for you and show you my book balance and everything, which obviously is not going to be good. I haven't finished reading yet. It is still technically January, but I can guarantee you that my ratio is not great. Okay. So you can see I was a very, very naughty girl. I've got my, <laughs> my Bujo, Bujo, my bullet journal. Um, so, and then just to show, to keep showing you guys my bullet journal bits. Um, so this is like my spread for January and, um, I did not do a ton of reading in January. Um, oh, and yeah, I'm starting to do, well, I've been doing this, but now I'm, um, highlighting it or like, uh, you know, making a mark, penciling it and doing page counts at the end, which I'm really pleased by. So I read uh, 1905 pages and it's also more specific because this is actually how many pages I've read as opposed to like Laverne as opposed to just like, you know, based on the books that I finished because obviously I read a lot of books that I'm not necessarily finishing. Oh my gosh, that girl is crazy. Anyway, so the point is, is that I bought some, I think the total was 17 books and I only read six, which means I needed to get rid of 11. So I'll show you guys those now. Um, the first four were really easy. Um, basically at some point, and I might've mentioned this in the book haul bit, but Yamini sent me, um, a ton of books. And one of the books that I asked her to send me was, um, this Outrages by Naomi Wolf and I'm getting rid of it already. I basically decided I was going to get rid of it before the package even arrived at my house. Um, this person, Naomi Wolf is like some kind of feminist person, but, uh, she was posting all of this trash about, coronavirus basically and I was just like I there's other people that I could read there's no no 
no need for me to read this person that doesn't think that like wearing a mask in public is a good idea. So, um, and I haven't looked at her Twitter feed since, so maybe she's changed her viewpoints and if so, that's fine, but I can't be bothered. Um, so I did have another one of her books on my shelves and that is The End of America, Letter of Warning to a Young Patriot. Um, and again, I just don't care. Um, and then the next few books, you're gonna be like, seven, eight, why didn't you get rid of those sooner? Um, so as you may or may not know, I'm a huge Harry Potter fan. Oh, look, I've got a, a Harry Potter knitting book right there. Um, I'm a huge Harry Potter fan. And so I was like, I'm gonna read all of JK Rowling's books because you know, she's so great. And then, you know, other stuff has happened since that time. And I just don't care. I'm just not gonna read her other books. I mean, I'm never gonna like, not like Harry Potter because I just, that's just part of who, my identity at this point. Sorry, y'all. Um, not sorry, but I am gonna be getting rid of her books here. I think, I think this is the only one that I actually purchased at a bookstore. Yeah, I got this at um, Barnes and Noble. So I'm getting rid of this. And then the, these two I bought at library book sales for two bucks each. So I'm not like super bothered by it. Um, but yeah, and it's not to say that I might not eventually read them possibly, but is it necessary for me to do that at this moment? No. And will these books exist probably forever? Yes. So who cares? Um, then I'm also getting rid of Jaws, uh, Jaws one and two. Um, I have no urge to read these. I think I started trying, I was like, well, not no urge. I think I got one of them for free somewhere. Oh, uh -huh. poor Steve Brown. I have your book. Um, it looks like a child <laughs> wrote that. I think I started reading the, yeah, the great fish moved silently through the night water propelled by short sweeps of its crescent tail. And it's like, I think I've, I like looked on Goodreads and it's like really misogynistic and you know, lots of boob stuff. So maybe that's not right, but plus they smell really dusty and I just can't. Um, on a similar note, I have this, I'm just not a fan of the dusty old things. <laughs> um, I do like the like aesthetic of, you know, the old bookcase with all of the old fancy books, but I have some pretty bad allergies and um, these books that are really dusty and old make it hard for me to breathe a little bit. Um, and I just don't even know what this is. It's called The Spy, A Tale of the Neutral Ground by James Fenimore Cooper. Uh, and this is from 1917. And I just don't even know. I think I got this from my dad's house and I just, it's like, I feel like I need to wash my hands just touching it. <coughs> um, you can make fun of me all you want. Okay. I can't help it. Um, then I'm getting rid of this copy of The Grapes of Wrath by John Steinbeck. Um, I'm not saying that I don't want to, dang it now. See, now I kind of want to keep it. <laughs> Good on the end sorry I definitely got this from my dad's house so um my dad's high school or I don't I don't think he went to this high school but I think he um he was a substitute teacher at this high school so again it's really hard because you have all these things that like have value because of how you got them but like the actual object itself does not bring me joy and there are prettier copies of this book that exists and again it's like kind of a shallow reason to get rid of a book but like just because something belonged to like a deceased parent is not a good enough reason to keep it I don't think and I'm trying really hard to get into that mentality but we uh, we as humans attach a lot of um like emotional value like we imprint and put emotional value onto objects and the objects are not what give us the emotions but we, we still, we still put that emotional value onto the object and therefore think that we need to keep the object forever, um, which is just trash thinking that I'm trying to get rid of. Obviously some things you, you, not everything, but the amount of things that I have for my father are just like so much. And I just need to start letting go. Apologize for getting emotional. On a similar note, I have this Betty Zane by Zane Gray. I think this has something to do with like the war and maybe she's like a spy or something. 
and it says on the inside mama pierce or no <laughs> mary pierce from mama so it's kind of again it's hard to get rid of these kinds of things but like it's like i mean it's just so dusty i can't breathe with that thing near me <sighs> I feel like such a little princess. And then the next two are just like pretty basic books that like I'm not going to read. Um, the first one is Fall of Poppies, um, which is stories of love and the Great War. Um, and it's a proof. It's a proof. It's an arc. Um, and it is just a bunch of short stories from this period of time, historical fiction. I'm just like not that into it. And then another one, Paris Was Ours, um, edited by Penelope Rollins. I'm pretty sure it's just edited and that yeah they're different different authors about Paris and being in Paris and again just like not not my style I feel like these two books are like in the you know what's her name Tracy Chevalier and uh you know I'm trying to think of another author in that kind of realm Lisa C you know just like people that write these types of books that I don't like <laughs> as you guys know that's not that's not for me. So anyways, I'm getting rid of all those books. And so yeah, so that means that I was even Stevens on my books. Um, and then I'll just talk about my favorite movies of the month. Let's see, because I didn't look at this earlier. Wow, I feel like my the first five movies that I watched were my, my favorite five movies. One, two, three, four, five. How funny. Um, okay, so let's see. So uh, number one is Election, of course, um, directed by... Alexander Payne, I believe, starring Reese Witherspoon and Matthew Broderick. I absolutely love it. I bought the Criterion Collection. This is the very first movie of the year that we watched. It was Jake's first time watching the movie, and I just love it. I almost want to rewatch it right now thinking about it. It is so funny. It's like really dark humor, it's like some inappropriate like sexual stuff between a teacher and a student, um, which I feel like is triggering and upsetting to people, but it's obviously all done in jest and is making fun of the teacher and just like the whole thing anyways um so yeah I really really liked it Reese Witherspoon is a lunatic in this movie and it is so good and then obviously Matthew Broderick also becomes a, quite a bit of a lunatic as well um then Shoplifters which I've already talked about as well um which I read or watched for the Invisible Cities Project it's a Japanese movie and it is directed by Hirokazu Koreeda and this is the story of a family who kind of like kidnaps a little girl kind of kind of um absolutely heartbreaking emotional beautiful stellar i wish this was a criterion movie i would buy that too um then i rewatched book smart because i love that movie and it fills me with a lot of joy um and then i rewatched uh hobbs and shaw fast and furious and yes i am telling you my favorite movies of the month hobbs and shaw um, Fast and Furious presents Hobbs and Shaw. I did a Fast and Furious marathon for my birthday. This was the last movie of the night though and Jake fell asleep during it and I wanted him to watch it. So we rewatched it. The intro to me is like the best part. I mean, the whole movie is the best part. Ah, it's so good. I love, I love um, Jason Statham and The Rock so much. They're so good. And then um, A Scanner Darkly, which is the first time that I'd ever seen that. I think I'd heard of it. Um, I watched this this was one of the movies for like our movie group thing um I think Michael picked it and it's a uh, link link later link ladder Richard link ladder I, I hear his name all the time on like film podcasts and I can't think of it but anyways it's one of those um gyroscope periscope Penelope scope I don't know it's one of those movies rotoscope I think that's it where it's like animated but it's not animated it's you know people and then they're kind of you know, it's a creepy thing. Um, and it is so, so, so good. I need to rewatch it actually, I think, cause it's just so good. So basically there's like this drug situation and there's an undercover cop situation and there's like crazy, not crazy people, but there's people that are doing drugs and like kind of like losing it a little bit. And then there's this whole other situation and it's just so good. I think it's based on a book by Philip K. Dick. Is that his name? Philip K. Dick? I think so. Um, also, this video is so long. Ugh. So anyways, yeah, I absolutely loved that. That is everything. I'm going to go. This video is so long. I'm so sorry. Uh, let me know if you have read or watched any of these, if you want to be entered for my giveaway for, um, for Shoah. And 
I will talk to you guys later. Bye.